Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we're called in to have a look at this guy here. Seems to have eaten one of the juvenile jewel cichlids and it's got stuck in its throat so uh, well, fish spines tend to be sort of growing from the front to the back so once it's lodged in the mouth it's not going to be able to just come out by itself because the spines sort of hold it in place and so what the fish is going to do it'll either suffocate to death because it, it's sort of uh, difficult to breathe or it could starve to death because it can't get any food into its mouth um, if it's small enough, it's possible that they could swallow it and then it would get digested and excreted out. But um, this looks quite large and it looks like um, he would have to try to withstand or um, outlive the rotting of the meat or the flesh. Hopefully there's no bacterial infection setting in and then he can get over it and be able to spit it out. But um, I doubt that's going to happen uh, in its natural way. So this guy seems like he's taken a bigger bite than he can chew. What we're going to do is we're going to sedate or anesthetize our patient and then using some alligator forceps uh, or maybe even scissors, we may have to manipulate and try and cut down the fish that's inside the mouth of the fish and be able to uh, relieve him that way. So. First thing, so we'll create the anesthetic solution. Is this his favorite spot or are you just doing this because I'm here? I think because he's probably feeling a bit sorry for himself. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna take the whole pot yeah, out that's with me. So now we've got our patient. We've got him in an anesthetic bath and it's just seeing the effects. It's getting uh, sedated now. It's lost its buoyancy control, writing reflex, it's still breathing. So at this stage, we can actually come in and have a closer look at what's happening. So we can come closer and have a look over here. Let's see, we have to take that, you can't really pull it backwards. We could have a look if we can pull it through this way. It's really lodged in there, okay. There's quite a bit of swelling in the tissues around it. So I think what we'll have to do is we'll have to actually go inside and cut up the tissue, the, the fish that's inside. Well, his our original plan was to actually go in and cut off little structures, but uh, there's not a lot of space to work with. We can't quite see what we're doing. Uh, so what I'm doing here is trying to get my forceps in and I'm trying to manipulate and, and twist the, the fish that's lodged inside. Sort of jiggling that fish around a little bit. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be working. Um, got a, a, a different idea. I'm, I'm gonna use the scissors and just gonna maybe try and push down on the, on the spines of the dorsal fin. Um, you can feel that this food or the fish that's lodged inside the mouth is actually upside down so I'm easing the, the scissors along laterally and then um, and then to its dorsal fin and yeah I think it's coming out Ooh, there you go looks like it's been there for quite a while you know we'll put him back and revive him This is just bits of uh, the dead tissue from the uh, fish that it tried to eat. It's coming out of its gills. And 
just to speed up his recovery. I'm just going to put him under the waterfall. Uh, no, can't quite reach it, so <laughs> I'll do this. Just run away. <laughs> uh, he's woken up by himself. Anyway, yeah, I think it looks like he's back. Now here's our patient just recovered from his anesthetic. He'll sort of stay in a corner in a quiet place until he's fully awake. Now a good way to check on his progress of recovery is to assess his appetite. So we're just going to put some fish food in here and, and have a look. He's showing some interest in joining in with the other fish and I suppose he doesn't look like he's eating it yet but he may be still a bit sore in his mouth from that sort of fish being lodged inside his mouth so uh, but it, it's a good sign that he's um, showing interest in the food and in swimming with the other fish it may take him a couple of days to fully recover and regain his appetite okay, let's take a closer look at this fish that was stuck in the mouth of our patient. Uh, you can see the, the eyes are a bit sort of demented, sort of partially digested. You can see a bit of mucus on the body of this fish, which could be from this fish itself or, or from our patient. Uh, you can see that the eyes completely gone there and this, yeah, the gills have gone really pale. So it's, and from the smell of it, you can tell it's been there for some time. Okay, looks like that was a success. Some of the dangers that can occur when fish eat something that's too big is that it can suffocate, number one, that will cause instant death. Uh, number two is that it will lodge in its throat uh, and the damage caused by the spines of the fish, uh, it can cause infection and so they could buy, die from septicemia and infection. And number three, which is a lot more chronic is that they could die from starvation and I guess one of the reasons why they may attempt to eat something bigger than they used to um, is one it, it's most common commonly occurs it most commonly occurs in predatory fish uh, with huge mouths so it's something like the Asian sea bass or the barramundi mare cod for example those with really large mouths, with large gait, they do try to eat something maybe half its body length and most of the time they do succeed but sometimes uh, they take something that's too big and they don't recover from that. Number three, the fish could actually starve to death but that would take a very long time for that to occur and in that time that gets debilitated and starving um, some other fish, larger predatory fish or bird could come and attack it so they may not really in effect die from starvation but from secondary predation. It's very important that we do take these things out as soon as possible um, as you could see the sort of the rotting carcass of the flesh that's eating it can lead to bacterial infections and the fish would die and would suffer and die so um, to do this, we normally need to anesthetize the fish, get him relaxed, uh, and also um, in an attempt to get the fish out um, that's lodged in there, we want to sort of push down the fin rays so that it sits flat against the body uh, so that the food object can actually be pulled backwards. Um, failing that, if, if the tissue, if it's possible, if you can get in there, if it's a larger fish, for example, you, you could try and cut off those fin rays, make them shorter and dislodge them from the mouth. So now I think our fish has gone back to normal. It's attempting to eat some food and I think with uh, this more food available to him, he's gonna learn from this mistake and not do it again because such a mistake can be lethal. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.